Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is Lionel Ketchian, and I'm here with George Ortega. And uh, we're here to talk about happiness, but you already know that. Because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Today, we'll be talking about how thoughts determine our happiness. And with George and I in the studio, we have a, a guest, and his name is Ray Rogers. Welcome, Ray. Uh, thank you, Lionel. It's so nice to be here um, talking about my favorite subject. Uh, I've uh, had the opportunity to teach math and science in high school and grammar school, and most recently I've been intrigued, well, I've always been intrigued with the subject of happiness, starting when I was 14, reading Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking. Well, from then on, I've been intrigued with happiness, and uh, recently offered, uh, have offered classes called uh, Life Lessons. Largely, we talk about the lesson of being happy in life. So, pleasure to be here, great opportunity. Great, right, right. And I understand you also taught high school. Taught high school, yes, in, uh, in uh, Westport and in Trumbull, and um, I taught math and science. But uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm glad to be talking about subjects that really touch my heart. Yes, and tell us, how does, um, uh, how does thoughts determining our happiness touch your heart? <laughs> <laughs> Well, primarily, as you, we are, as humans, we are thinking beings, and uh, our thoughts uh, distinguish us from all other species on this planet. Uh, long ago, we had not too big frontal lobes; they were kind of sloped. But now we have big frontal lobes, so we do a lot of thinking. Um, so we have the opportunity to think and to choose what we think. And in situations where one might react uh, badly with uh, fear or anger or anxiety, we have now the opportunity to take a minute and to respond with better, uh, in a better way using our frontal lobes and thinking. Um, the species uh, uh, still has that fight or flight um, wiring built into us, but now the thinking, we have the opportunity to think and choose a response to a situation. So uh, that's certainly one way where thinking would add to our happiness. So how do we do that? How do we like move from that automatic, visceral, you know, biological response you're referring to, it's like choosing our thoughts to, to become happier? Well, I think like with any skill, and I call this a skill, we learn skills. We learn the skill of talking and walking from our parents, but we learn. Uh, it takes us a long time to learn these skills as human beings. Horses get up after they're born, they walk around right away. We have to take a longer time to learn skills, but we're learning all our life, and hopefully we never give up learning. So it's a skill. I would say, like most things, practice, practice, practice. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. So, uh, and we can take the time and thinking about things like this, perhaps having this discussion, having people think about subjects like this, would move us in the direction of practicing responding in an appropriate way rather than reacting. But once you do it once, it's maybe hard the first time. The second time, maybe a little easier. We are habitual creatures. We can develop good habits as well as bad habits. Let's try to talk about developing some good habits. Happiness, happy responses. Now that's, that's wonderful, Ray. And I, as you were talking about the mind, how the front has been developed, I know we talked about this uh, uh, in the past. Uh, the back of the mind, you said that's the old mind. That's the... Uh, uh, the reptilian brain. The reptilian uh, brain. Uh, right. Uh, it's the uh, response to... Uh, to uh, something that's going to harm us and uh, it's as human beings it served us very well as you know some species are now extinct <laughs> we have survived we rule the planet don't we mm -hmm. because of our thinking but we've gotten to where we are because uh, we have uh, in some cases fought in some cases flight took flight and it saved us mm -hmm. but nowadays we don't run into too many saber-toothed tigers but we still have that hard wiring in us. And I don't want to say we have to fight against it, 
because in some cases, a physical case, uh, you put your hand on a hot burner, you want to not to have to think about, do I want to take my hand off it or not? You want to react right away before you do damage to yourself. So it helps us. But we can uh, also think about a response that has a, um, a better result. Oh, yeah. use, our, use our powers of concentration, use our imaginations to consider a better response. You know, I'd like to break down the, this idea of, of thoughts determining our happiness by, by kind of like explaining that happiness is, it, it has like three, we can see it in three ways. The first way it's an emotion, right? The emotion of, of happiness. Then the second way that it's, it's a mood and that's when we sustain our emotions for a certain period of time, a few hours or so. And then finally, happiness is a state. So, so essentially, the way this works is that, um, as Lionel says a lot, we can only control what's happening in whatever moment of time we're in, right? So basically, we don't really have to worry about controlling our moods and our state of happiness if we focus on controlling our emotion of happiness. So, you know, as you're saying, um, if we move away from that automatic, reptilian, primitive way of thinking where we're just I instinctively reacting what hap to what happens and begin to control our thinking, then we'll be controlling each of our emotions as they arise according, you know, depending on what, um, what, where, um, you know, what our circumstances are. Mm. I like the word uh, choosing your emotion. We always come back to that idea of choice, that happiness is a choice. And certainly we're controlling our emotions, but I like the word we choose our emotions. We could see a possible better, better response. And so we choose it. But it takes practice. It takes practice. And we're so habitual, you know, this is in our society, you know, people that have been abused as children tend to be tend to abuse their own children. We're socked into this natural and habitual, these habitual responses, but that doesn't have to be. We have choice. We have choice. It's wonderful. Think about it. We have a choice. Wonderful. Dogs, they don't have too much choice. Birds, they don't have too much choice. They build their nests the same way year after year. They fly the same place year after year. We have choice. Why not use it? Develop that beautiful gift that we have, you know. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people realize, and it's so true, Ray, that we have choice. We have choice, and we have the choice to be happy. But conversely, we also have the choice to be unhappy. And I know that we talked about a book that you read and I read, Choice Theory, by uh, Dr. William Glasser. He's a renowned psychiatrist. Excellent. I consider him... Uh, one of the leading thinkers in, in happiness and inspiration and, and bringing this work in, into the public side. But, you know, I, I know we talked about this, but I'll let you uh, tell people about the fact that he even discusses choice when it comes to unhappiness, I think. Why don't you tell people about that? Well, I don't think e any of us here are here to say we, we don't have a reasons to be unhappy. We're not sticking our heads in the sand. We're not running away and averting, no, we have happiness, we just choose happiness like automatons. We can choose, there's lots of reasons to be unhappy, you know? Gee, uh, you know, the, the war in Iraq. I don't have a date on Friday night. Uh, there's lots of reasons to be unhappy. But we can choose and develop reasons to be happy, okay? And, and so we address the ideas of, of there's reasons to be unhappy. But we take it a step further. We're not running away from that. We're saying, yes, there are reasons to be unhappy, but we address that by choosing to be happy and we move on to solutions to problems rather than just get mired in the problem and never get off worrying about the problem, okay? Yeah, because you're saying, I mean, there's reasons to be unhappy. I think maybe even more specifically, there are reasons to be potentially unhappy. Because like, for example, with the war in Iraq, with the, whatever situation, some of us may say to ourselves, because this is happening, happening, that means that I have to diminish my happiness, okay? That person's made that decision. Another person may say, 
the world's not perfect. Things are going to be happening in the world and in my own life that may not be the best, may not be the way one might choose, but we don't have to allow an imperfect world, imperfect situations to determine our happiness. We can say to ourselves, yes, the world has, uh, is imperf imperfect, but my happiness, our happiness is not dependent on how well or not things around us are going. For sure, and just, just, just think of the, the idea now. It's an, it's an opportunity. You know, this is not the Garden of Eden. That was a long time ago. But we have now the opportunity to express ourselves as individuals to make a contribution, to make the world a better place. If there, if there was no unhappiness, well, it would certainly be a different situation. But we wouldn't have to do much. We wouldn't have to exercise this gift that we have of free will. There would be no need. Mm -hmm. But now we have this so we can express our individuality. We can make a contribution. Making some, someone smile, give, lending a hand to someone, doing a charitable work. How does that make you feel? You can revel in, in the... Make, there you are. That's who I am. Gives you a sense of identity. Who doesn't want this self-image that everyone's talking about? Now you have a self-image of, of a giver. How would that feel? We have that choice. Yes, I think um, when you really boil it down, except for maybe a given few, most people really crave making a difference. If they could be given that chance to make a difference, they, they, would, they would jump on that like, you know, like nobody's business. And yet we can each make a difference by being happier, but we don't realize what the potential for good is in making a decision like that, in making that kind of choice. And I think it's interesting because uh, this, uh, most people I talk to really want to make a difference, but you have to begin by doing it in your own life with something like things you can control. For sure, and we can control that decision. And actually, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of like making the world a better place, mm -hmm. a lot of times we're conditioned to think that our role in life is to be very good people. And I think the reason we think this is because being good is a good strategy for becoming happier. You know, it works. We do things in the right way. We treat people well. We, we um, do our obligations, our responsibilities, and that will help us become happier. But the other part of it is that, um, as Aristotle says, as we know, um, as, as we understand, happiness is a very great good. Aristotle called it the highest good. So we can you know we can like channel our energies uh, that that we um devote to improving the world to enhancing increasing our, our personal level of happiness and increasing the personal level ha of happiness of everyone around us and that that you know what better what better thing can we do for the world and you never know how you are affecting others i dare to say everyone's life is affecting the whole world much more than they realize we're constantly you can't see someone looking at you from over here but there people are noticing you and if you get cut off on the highway well you may go well, gee I'm gonna cut off that guy back but there's a lot of other people on the highway most of the time because these happens in traffic -y situations a lot of time and other people might say gee I wonder if that guy just got cut off I wonder how he's gonna react so given an example and making the choice well maybe that person is in a, an emergency or something like that you you've done maybe a lot more good than you think ray that's a beautiful thought i, I really never examined that as a thought i never thought that somebody else was watching your actions even even in, in a traffic well, Lionel, you're a parent you're a parent and a beautiful daughter triathlete, <laughs> Kim, that I met the other day on the phone. What is the primary way you influence your children? By your example. By your example. You can, you can talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. You know, don't do what I say. What it has to go? Say what I do? What is it? Don't do as I do, do as I say. Yeah, do as I say. And anyway, your example, what the point is, your example speaks right. 
louder. Actions speak louder than words. There it is. Actions speak louder than words. I want to throw a question out to us. I, I was preparing an outline for some of the possible topics we might cover on the show, and I came up with a question, and um, I think it's important to our, our topic of how our thoughts control or, or, or um, influence our happiness. Mm -hmm. um, if we're to think about it, what thoughts do you think are most important for us to be able to choose to, you know, or, or, or not choose? What, what, what thoughts do you think uh, influence our happiness the most? Well, I want to go back to the idea of uh, just the idea of appreciating. How about that for a thought? We have life. We have been given a gift of life. We got to do this. We got to do it. We have an opportunity. Okay, how about that for a thought? And every morning go, I have an opportunity here. I'm living. I, I woke up. I think that's perfect. I think that, you know, that's probably the key thought. You know, as you're saying, we have this world that we've been presented with, that we've been introduced to. And at every opportunity, we have the choice of either appreciating it or not, and, and how much to appreciate it. Yeah, you guys are talking about uh, uh, the perfect answer to that question, I think, because I think, you know, there's a lot of components to happiness, but I think uh, gratitude is, could be 90% of it. And, and if you think about it, what is gratitude but a thought? You know, you're directing your mind uh, to dwell in a certain area, and you're creating an intention for your own outlook. So you get to see what you're telling yourself you want to see. And the other thing I think with gratitude is if we don't appreciate this moment for what it is, then what good is the next moment? <laughs> because if this moment is empty and not enough, I guarantee you the next moment won't be any better because it'll be an external moment for you. But once you make it enough, it becomes part of you. And then you move into the next moment, into reality together, so to speak. The other thing is, if you, um, if you have $5 in your pocket and you're grateful for that, when you get another dollar, you'll be grateful for six. But if you have 10 million bucks and you're not grateful for it, uh, 50 billion won't do anything for you either. And so unless you could be grateful for what you have, whatever it is, uh, and gratitude could be as simple as being able to see uh, that smiley face on the table, and, and that's it. Hmm. And once you're in touch with gratitude, you're rich. You, you, you've stepped into the zone of happiness, mm -hmm. and I think that's, and you're, you've stepped into r directing your thinking, and I think that's very profound that you come up but with But the that. point is, you know, we can ha make a li develop a list. Of, the point is, we have so much, mm -hmm. certainly in this country, but we even more than that. We have a mother and a father, and maybe brothers and sisters, and neighbors, and friends, and television, and people to talk to. We have so much. If we just realize that, now I don't know how you get from there to there, but maybe talking about it will help. I'm always struck by how many different ways you could look at life, how many different ways. Uh, a priest at a, in church one day said he took the famous glass of water that's half full that everybody hears about, and you can look at the glass of water as half empty and be sad about it because, gee, it's half empty, or be happy about it that it's half full. But he came up with a beautiful other way of looking at it. He said, that glass that's half full of water can also be an opportunity to give a thirsty person a drink. Thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. What a nice way of thinking of that. Where, is he, where do you come up with that? Well, maybe just talking, maybe getting into the happiness feeling. Ideas like that will tend to come up. And you'll see things as opportunities rather than, what, am I happy that I have a glass of water? Or am I happy that I you know, have this much? Instead of focusing about yourself, we're at the whole new level. Focusing about not what I'm getting, an opportunity to give. So, Ray, you're saying that how you see things is how you'll experience life. Attitude is everything. Okay, and, and a, an important part of this, I think, is that, like, we're not in this world alone. We're surrounded by people, you know, our family, our friends. So then a the question becomes, well, the idea is that, like, 
We can be become happy regardless of how happy or not other people are, but generally it's much easier for us to become much happier when those around us are very happy, right? There's a synergy. Right, so then the question becomes, well, how is it that we go about um, helping others to become happier through guiding their thoughts so that not only they'll become happier, but it'll be much easier for, our, for us to become happier? I'm always struck by how contagious happiness is. How a smile is so contagious. It's, everyone has experienced that. And everyone sits in front of the baby and does all kinds of stuff to make the baby smile. It's, it is contagious. They want that smile. Everyone exper has experienced that. That's in our gut. Let's not forget about that. Let's share the happy, share the smiles, share them. One thing I think we can do is like, this is actually even a, a law. I, I used to practice um, Orthodox Judaism and there was a law that we, we are um, obligated to rebuke our neighbors. And that means when we see somebody doing something wrong, we're obligated to say, hey, wait a minute, this, you're not doing this right. Now, naturally, we have to be very respectful of their feelings because it's not our intention to like say, hey, you're doing something wrong with them. But the idea is that, um, when somebody, let's say, has, um, is saying, oh, you know, things are, are not as good as they should be, okay? We can say, wait a minute, well, you know, they are as good as they need to be. What, whatever it is that isn't as, as, as well as they would like is just not necessary to their happiness. And we can teach each other in that way. And we always have the opportunity, whatever the situation is, to make it better. That is an option. Yeah, there's a, there's a line in a song. I, it's a woman singer, she's great. And it goes, it's not, it's not getting what you want, but wanting what you get is part of the lines in a song. It's a recent, you know, it's, it's out there lately. I think that, that, that's a good way to look at what we're talking about. Appreciation. Because, yeah, because if we could want what we get, we get on the same side of the fence with it, and we have the, the strength to do our own lifting in life to get further what we want. But once we oppose it, then we oppose everything. Then we're, then we're not grateful for anything. And how are you going to solve that problem? Boy, that's such a big question. You know, if you ever asked somebody, what do you want? Boy, think about that for a while. Tough question. Tough question. Simple? <laughs> hey, what do you want? <laughs> think about it. Really? What do you and, want? Well, what, what is the obvious answer? I mean, what, what do we all want? We want happiness. Right. Absolutely. We want happiness. But I've asked myself that question, and it took me a year to figure it out. So, and, you know, I listed 10 things, and I, and I said, okay, it's only going to be one thing. Happiness made the list, and it kept climbing until I realized that happiness was the whole reason I wanted anything. <laughs> so, and then I realized that if I could, have, if I could really be happy, I can enable myself to get the other things if they were going to come. But without it, it was the whole reason I wanted anything to begin with. And, and then I found out that Aristotle said that, and Plato talked about it, and I said, okay, if these guys have been talking about it for 2,500 years, how come it takes us so long to understand what do we want? And yeah. we don't. Happiness certainly greases the, the, the road. It makes us go faster and makes us enjoy the journey on the way uh, if we're happy as we're proceeding hey uh, we've all heard it's not the destination it's the journey because yeah. we're always on a journey it's a journey where here we are we're we're on on this journey we're on this road you know and uh, I think that's a good point because what happens is like we'll want what we want only because we believe that it'll make us happier now, the, the interesting thing is that a lot of times we're not taught so well by society. For example, the number one uh, reason, the number one way that people will say well, they'll um, become happier is by having more money, okay? And, you know, after 40 years of research, the, the um, social sciences have, have documented that over the poverty line, that's not going to make a difference. In fact, like 37% of the people on Forbes' list of wealthiest Americans are actually less happy than the average American. So just it's the idea that, um, that you know, firstly, whatever we want is for the purpose of happen happiness. And secondly, we have to realize, we have to learn, we have to understand what will make us happy that we're striving and what may not necessarily. It's within our grasp. 
happiness is within our grasp night, right now. I'm sure that in a lot of studies, I remember they did studies with the old Irish sweepstakes, the people that won, and they followed up on it. They won the Irish sweepstakes. Oh, no, later on, they're, they're not that happy. They're, they're, it's, not, it's not the material wealth that ultimately makes us happy. We have example after example of people that not only have achieved material wealth, but fame. Marilyn Monroe, John Belushi, Elvis Presley, they've achieved tremendous wealth and tremendous fame, not only wealth, but were they happy? It doesn't seem like it. They right. wanted more and they turned to drugs or other things because it just wasn't enough. So get wanting, wanting, wanting more, wanting more. We have example after example that it didn't lead to, there's no, okay, now I am happy. It's. It's not it. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half just before we close. What are your feelings on like of developing the habit of 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 being of choosing our thoughts to become happier? I think it's again, we've been talking a lot about opportunity here and knowing how habitual of cre uh, creatures we are. Use that fact. We're habitual. We do things by habit. Let's try to create good habits. Practice. 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 Practice putting a smile on your face. If you might feel silly, but right now, put this big smile on your face and uh, see how it works. Start it with that. Good. Start with great. that and move on from there. Use your imagination to see, to see a better possibility. You've been given it. Use it. It's an opportunity. Uh, use your individuality and make your own personal contribution. We are all charged to make our own contributions. Add to, add to the happiness. It, it's contagious. It sure is. Well, uh, Ray, I can't tell you, uh, uh, thank you enough for being here and being our guest today. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. Yeah. It's my great pleasure. Great. And George, it's always a pleasure to be here. I, I can't believe how fast time goes by. I think it's the Einstein, uh, you know, idea of relativity <laughs> here. Uh, but I will say that um, a smile just changes your whole state of mind. Do it. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. Be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join us again next week with the Happiness